know, back in uh, November, early November, stuff started happening. I think, you know, a lot of people, a lot of families, um, a lot of folks here at the church began to experience some really difficult times. Uh, there are a couple people who passed away. Uh, so there's families that mourning, people who got sick, right? And there were all types of, of, of challenges, right? Um, all, all types of brokenness. And, you know, um, uh, as uh, the pastor of the church, like, I feel a lot of that, you know, like one of the things is when people are going through stuff, I always try to reach out, but I also don't want to overwhelm people or intrude, right? Like, you know, sometimes people need space, but I'm always available for anyone um, whenever you guys need. But I, 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 Brittany and I uh, were talking in November and we're like, man, it's, it's a dark time. It feels like a dark time where a lot of stuff is just happening and a lot of attacks are happening, a lot of brokenness, right? And it, it's interesting in that, um, you know, November, December are oftentimes, right, uh, considered the, the most joyous time of year, right? It's the, it's the holidays. Everything's supposed to be great and happy. And I remember as a little kid, right, you, you kind of are oblivious to all the different things happening. Um, and, and you're just filled with joy because mostly because of the stuff you're going to get, right? Like, let's be honest, this is, you're happy because of the things you're going to get or, or you're hoping to get, right? A lot of times you hope to get certain things. I know my kids... Amazon started sending catalogs again, if you guys didn't know, right? And literally the whole thing is marked with an X, right? All, everything except the girl toys. If it's a boy toy, it's marked with an X. And all, you know, they don't care about the, anything that pink is not marked with an X. But that, besides that, they wanted everything inside that Amazon uh, gift thing. So, you know, in this uh, great time of joy, or what's supposed to be a great time of joy and celebration, there's an experience of difficulty, right? And so, um, you know, as a church body, we always want to uh, come together, support one another, lift each other up through prayer and other means of support. And um, yeah, there are several people going through financial things, all types of different issues and problems. And what I've been doing uh, recently is going through the Old Testament. We're going to do a couple series in the Old Testament um, uh, uh, this year. Uh, but one of the things that I came across recently um, as I was studying reminded me of this time of great joy and celebration due to circumstance, but also the recognition that there are, right, there are or there will be times of difficulty and stress, right? So we're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 7 today, and we're also we're going to integrate um, some prayer time in today's service, first individually and then corporately. But in Second Chronicles chapter 7, um, Solomon uh, finishes building the Lord's temple. Right, God's temple. And as if you're familiar with the Old Testament, this was something that was absolutely phenomenal, right? People of God, right, have had waited, right, waited hundreds and hundreds of years. If you remember, that land was first promised to Abraham, right? promised to Abraham, then they go into slavery in Egypt, and then Moses comes out, right? Moses doesn't lead them into the promised land. Then we have uh, Joshua lead them, and all these things. And then finally, King David, um, actually King Saul was the first king of Israel. Then King David came. King David was going to try to build the temple to the Lord. But if you recall, he had sinned too much, right? His hands had experienced too much bloodshed. So King David, like, was instructed by the Lord not to build the temple. And then King Solomon finally built the temple to the Lord, right? And it was a magnificent celebration, right? Sort of reminded me of a celebration of Christmas, right? We have God coming to earth, right, to redeem us, to be in relationship with us, right? This tremendous celebration, right? So we go through this, they sacrifice, they consecrate the temple to the Lord, and then after they consecrate the temple to the Lord, after this tremendously big celebration, right, um, Solomon falls asleep, right? And in his sleep, right, the Lord communicates to him, right? In his sleep. It says in Second Chronicles 7, starting verse 12, it says, The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer. And I've chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices, right? That's chosen the temple as a place where people can, can uh, go and provide sacrifices to be in, in right standing with the Lord, right? Old Testament law, 
old covenant law. Then verse 13, it says, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, right? So it's like, hey, there's this place that you have, uh, uh, you know, um, I have chosen, right? Um, I have chosen this place for myself. Here's a place of God. And automatically he goes into, when I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain or command, locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. So there's a fantastic temple, tremendous celebration. And God automatically, first things first, right? Tells Solomon that this is, you know, these things will occur. And it's actually God at work, right? These difficulties, these challenges are God at work, right? So God says, as soon as the temple is built, right, right after the celebration, there will be times of feeling cut off from the heavens, right? There will be times of drought. There will be a times where we are attacked by pests, right? Right? Locusts will devour the land, and there will be times of being plagued, right? Is this false? Has everyone felt these times? Everybody over the age of 12, right? over 14, right? right? Everyone here has felt these times? Am I in right company, right? Hey, many people are feeling these times right now. And that's a punch to the gut, right? That's a punch to the gut. I love that picture right there. Like, oh, right? We just built this temple, the place that God has chosen, and clang right in the stomach, right? You're going to have these times, right? Am I right, Chaney? We know that. We're going to have these times. Bible, and that's the beautiful thing about Scripture. It doesn't lie. God doesn't lie to us, right? He tells us what's going to happen, right? We're going to have these difficult times. And a lot of times in these difficult times, what we want to say is none of this is my fault, right? None of this is my fault. Oh, man, that was this problem. It's their fault, right? This person's giving me a hard time. Ever, anybody ever come home from work and said, man, this guy's giving me a hard time? Am I the only one? Right? Right? Or, right, if you're, Married or in a family relationship, X is giving me a hard time, right? I want to say X because my wife is not in nursery this morning, right? Why she have to be so difficult? Jim, have you ever said that? Don, have you ever? Not against, not against Sally. Never. Never, right? This isn't my fault. Why do they do that? Why, or worse, why do they make me do that, right? Somebody does something. We do something and we say, why did they make me do that, JD? Why you made me do that, right? Why? None of this is my fault. Let's take a look at scripture in these circumstances, right? In these circumstances of feeling cut off, feel drought, right? Feeling dry, feeling empty, right? Feeling attacked, feeling plagued. What does scripture say? What does God say next, right? God says, Second Chronicles 7, 14, he says, if my people who are called by my name, who will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them their sin and I will heal their land, right? Man, these times of drought, these times of difficulty, these times of dryness, these times of being attacked and plagued, what does God say to do? He says, humble ourselves, right? Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from wicked ways, right? The biblical truth is if we want to fix the problems around us, we got to start with ourselves. So often we look at other people and we blame other people. We blame circumstances or whatever else, and we give ourselves the free pass, right? Has anybody ever done this? Giving ourselves the free pass, it's not our fault, right? Hey. Stuff isn't working around us. It's other people's problems, right? A lot of people are plagued by jumping around to different jobs all the time, right? The job, man, this place stinks to work at. This place stinks to work at, and, right? And they move on. Or they have the same problem wherever they go, right? Wherever they go. Oh, man, people are too sensitive, right? People are too sensitive. It's, you know, a guy from Jersey, it's easy to say, you know, people are too sensitive, right? My wife is from Virginia. 
got to learn about tone and all types of stuff like that. You know, we just got to get married, right? I have to fix myself. Even before getting married and being in a relationship, you have to recognize, hey, if I want to have a good relationship, if I want to have a good marriage, I need to fix myself because I'm all types of messed up, right? So if we want to fix the problems around us, if we want to fix our difficulties, we got to fix ourselves. That's what scripture says, right? Scripture says that if God's people, if you say you are God's people, you say you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? It says fix yourself. It said humble yourself, right? Confess our sins, right? Admit that we have a problems and difficulties, right? Pray in communication. Go to God, right? Seek him. Seek his face, right? Know him intimately and stop our wicked ways, right? Now, it's not necessarily in order. You know, ultimately, to know God intimately, you have to know his word and his ways, right? And there's a lot of different ways to go about knowing his word and his ways, right? There's three primary ways that God communicates to us. You know, first and foremost is scripture, right? People will often lead us astray. Right? People say all types of things about the Bible, and most of them have never read the whole thing. Right? Most of them have never read the whole thing. Right? So, to know God intimately, we have to get accustomed and strengthened to knowing His Word and knowing what it says, right? In its entirety. Right? We have to know that. Then, by knowing His Word, as soon as we know God's Word, and a great place to start, I always think, is the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, right? Um, recently, um, you, you know, I, I was um, watching a, a podcast and somebody said that uh, basically all of ethics and morality over the past 200 years are based off of the Sermon on the Mount, right? Matthew chapter 5 to 7, right? So once we know God's word, it so clearly shows us that we're wrong, Right? We're wrong in certain things, that none of us are perfect, right? And that's why we need God more, right? So we know God's word, we're we humble, and we confess our sins, right? We go to him, and we, we, we change our ways. He transforms us as we develop this relationship with him, and then we pray, right? When all these things happen, when we go to the Lord, we're being renewed and refreshed in the Lord, right? He forgives us, he strengthens us, and he fixes a lot of stuff, right? There are some things that we can't fix, right? But ultimately, right? Ultimately, he will make us at peace and he will strengthen us. He will give us joy in the most difficult circumstances when we're strengthened in the Lord, right? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take some time to go through this, right? To go through these things, a, a, a time of, of guided prayer for each of us because these things are so important. Every single one of us has these challenges and difficulties, right, in some part of our life. And so we're going to take some time this morning to actually pray through them and go through them first individually and then corporately. For this first part, we should all humble ourselves. Humble ourselves before the Lord, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment. And I want you to, to think about your own life as I'm talking, right? Think about the things going on in your life and take a moment to pray and ask God for humility. Ask God to show you your sin. Ask God to show you where you're living for yourself instead of him, right? And then ask him that you can be humble before him and humble before others, all right? So let's just take a moment and individually pray that we can be humble before the Lord and before others. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are great and mighty. 
You're the perfect creator, the king of the universe. And yet you humbled yourself, leaving your high throne in heaven to dwell among us. To dwell among the stench of the earth. To lead us, to guide us, to show us the way, and ultimately die for us on the cross, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that each one of us can humble ourselves before you. And we could recognize the sin in our life. That we could submit to you. And we could have you be Lord over all things. We pray, O oh Lord, that our humility will not be a, a false humility, but cut us to the heart. I pray, O oh Lord, oh Lord, that our humility will not be a hidden humility. Where in front of others, we put on a show, but internally, we feel a different way. And I pray, O oh Lord, that our humility will not be an unhealthy humility. One where we trash ourselves and we tear ourselves down instead of recognizing that we are all made in your image and we all have value. We are all loved and we all should be treated with dignity and respect, O oh Lord. So I pray, O oh Lord, that we can see ourselves through your eyes, we could have your thoughts, and we can have your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, let's take a moment and let's seek God's face. Right? And the scripture says, if my people will seek my face. So let's take a moment and ask God for clarity. Ask God to guide us in an area of our life where we're not sure what to do. Right? Anybody know what to do in every circumstance right now in their life? No. Sure, there's an area where you would love God's wisdom and God's direction, right? So let's take a moment and pray and ask God for clarity. If there's options, pray that he just opens a door and make it abundantly clear for you. Pray that he just shows you what to do and how. Heavenly Father, we are clouded by our circumstances. We only have two eyes, and we can only be present in one place. There are so many different moving pieces here on earth, so many things that feel completely out of our control. Sometimes, and sometimes we feel like we're completely in control, but obviously are not. So we pray, O oh Lord, for clarity. We pray for your wisdom, O oh Lord. We pray that we can see things clearly. We could weigh things the way you want us to weigh things. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will um, just know you intimately and know what you desire in our circumstances. If there's things in our life that we should shed, O oh Lord, to know you better and follow you better, we pray, O oh Lord, for clarity in that. If there's things, O oh Lord, that we need to just carry our cross and suffer, be more like you and just own up to, and we need to be strengthened in, we pray, O oh Lord, for clarity in that. And we pray for the strength and wisdom in both circumstances, O oh Lord. We pray that we could know you, we could see you, and we could be guided by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, let's take a moment. 
to pray and confess our sin. Step number one to change in anything is recognizing it needs to be changed, <clears throat> right? If we never admit we have a problem, if we never admit we have an issue, we can't change it, right? If we think it's okay, we're not going to do something about it, right? Sometimes we cloud ourselves on a spectrum too. In one moment, we'll feel like we're great and we got everything perfectly and in order, and then the next moment or, or, or period down the road, we'll think we're absolutely horrible and we have nothing right. And we feel like we're horrible and we have nothing right. We can't actually fix the things in our life that need to be fixed, right? Because the truth is not in either, right? None of us are perfect and great in all these things. And none of us <clears throat> are absolutely horrible. Right, You're absolutely horrible. Um, you know, several years ago, I was reading about a serial killer, right? And what this serial killer had done is he married this woman. And she had a child, and he was really good to her and the child, right? And then years later, 10, 15 years later, I forget the exact amount of years, it was found out that he had killed 30 plus people. And this girl had such a difficult time I say, man. Were, were we just like his cover or did he really care about us and love us, right? And so there, this serial killer was a decent husband by the world's perspective, at least a decent father, right? But yet he was doing these things, right? So if we look at him and we judge him, you know, case by case, hey, he was a great husband and father, but he got all this other stuff going on, right? And all of us are similar, right? I hope none of us are like that, right? I hope none of us are doing that. But right, we're similar in that we're doing really good in some areas, right? And we're messing up in other areas, right? So let's take a moment. And most of us know, right? Most of us know. Sometimes it's hard to recognize our sin, recognize where we're, we're falling short. But most of us know the areas that we're weak or we're struggling or we're stumbling. So let's take a moment and pray. Confess our sins to God, ask him for forgiveness, and then ask him for the strength and wisdom to overcome those sins and to be more like him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we get to know you better, as we learn more about you and your ways, our brokenness becomes so much clearer. We repent, O oh Lord, of our sin. We, we repent, O oh Lord, for putting ourselves above you, putting our ways above your ways. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to just reign in our hearts and our minds. We pray, O oh Lord, that we could have the strength and wisdom to follow you. We pray, O oh Lord, that we could be surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ that will lead us and guide us and help us and encourage us. We pray, O oh Lord, for authentic relationships in a world filled with fakeness, O oh Lord. We desire the authenticity of Jesus Christ the authenticity of God, of a God that is merciful and graceful. And we pray, O oh Lord, um, that we could just be more like you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Okay. So in 2 Chronicles 7, we see you know, God's people humble themselves, pray, seek his face, and stop their wicked ways. God forgives us, and he heals our land right? Safety and resources here in this context, you know, specifically talking about the safety and resources of Israel, right? But there's a, a power, right? It's the importance of praying individually is absolutely um, important, right? I recommend highly praying every day in the morning and in the evening, right? Start your day communicating with God and end your day communicating with God, right? Put him first 
and foremost in all things. But there's also a tremendous power and importance of praying together, right? James chapter 5, 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, right? As you learn about Scripture, as you know about Scripture, our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ, right? Our righteousness comes from our relationship with God, right? So praying together is important, right? Confession and praying together is important. So we're going to take a little bit of time and we're going to pray together. We're going to pray um, based on the format of the Lord's Prayer. Um, uh, many of you know the Lord's Prayer uh, in Matthew. The Lord's Prayer is recorded as this, as Jesus saying, this is then how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, right? Jesus instructing us how to pray. So, right, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, it's broken down generally into, you know, anywhere from four to six areas. I, I, you know, I like to break it down like this, right? First, a, a prayer of praise, right? Hallowed be your name, right? God, your name is holy and righteous above all things, right? Praising God for who he is, right? Second, praying for God's ways, God's will to be done, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Praying for God's ways, right? Praying for prov provision. All of us need stuff. We often think we need more than we actually, than we actually do, right? We want way more than we need, and we tend to confuse these words, right? But we all need God's provision. Does anybody not need to eat here? Right? We need to eat, right? We need things. So praying for provision. Praying for forgiveness, right? Amen. Repenting of our sins, right? Uh, uh, forgive us of our wrongs, right? But also praying for righteousness as we forgive our debtors, right? Who ultimately has forgiven us? God, Christ has forgiven us. We're praying to be, have the righteousness of Christ. And then lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, right? Praying for God's protection. So it usually comes down to these six things when we try to, to model Christ's prayer. So what we're going to do for the last five minutes is choose a, find a partner, unrelated, because you, you might not want to pray with the person in your house, right? So find one person in the congregation, somebody sitting close to you, and then team up and choose to pray for three out of these six things, right? Together, pray a prayer of praise or a provision or righteousness or protection, all right? So separate, find one or two people up to groups of three and pray together for three of these six things. It's great and mighty but is also present, O oh Lord. You have provided for us and shown us wisdom on your ways. You provide for us. You are righteous. You are perfect. And you are the protector of all things, O oh Lord. So we pray that we can submit to you. We pray that we could worship you. And we could follow you. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to partake uh, in the...